All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to repair a leak in one of your tanks. That's an ABS tank. This can be your black or gray water tank. Um, this is the kind of leak that no one wants to have to fix because I'm gonna have to drop the tank. If you uh, have a, a crack that you can get to, either by removing your, your underbelly or getting through an access panel, if you can get to the leak, you don't have to drop it and it's much easier. I've got two more videos on YouTube one showing how to do a really bad leak where you drill out the ends of the holes, uh, squirt stuff up in there, do a really good solid leak. And I've got another one that's like an output leak, uh, where it's just a surface repair video leak. And then this one, uh, the leak is actually up on top of the top of the tank. There's no way to get to it. I've explored all, all avenues. I have to drop the tank. So that's what this video is going to cover. So first thing, of course, you need to drop your uh, underlayment. Um, the newer ones have like a plastic uh, corrugated stuff, older ones have like an aluminum sheathing under there. Um, be good, good opportunity to replace all the fiberglass too. Uh, so drop your underbelly, get to where you can see the tank and where you can get to the attachment points. I've got three on each side. Alright, then we're going to disconnect our... Disconnect our level sensor. We're going to take it apart here at the blade valve so that we don't have to cut this part. Pull the bolts out. Big good opportunity to replace your blade valve. Let that drain. Alright, on this tank, it happens to be my kitchen gray water tank. There is only one outlet pipe, and it is the one that comes up and feeds the kitchen sink. If you were working on a black water tank that has an air vent, or your shower tank that has an air vent, you're going to have to uh, gain access to the vent line also. But if it's your kitchen, you only have to make one cut on this one pipe here. So make sure you know whether you've got a vent pipe or not. All right? Kitchens usually don't because they come up and have one of those uh, little top cap vents. Uh, but your bathroom, uh, your black water and your bathroom are going to have a vent pipe. And you're going to have to make a cut there and uh, at the drain pipe as well. So... Uh, in here. It's kind of a tight fit under here, so let's see what we can do with this video. So, I want to make the cut as close as possible to the, the tank, um, but high enough up that it's not going to obstruct anything, like my... Uh, decorative cover flange here we need the the union to be above that point so if we come in here and we mark our our floor level the union is actually going to be like right up in here so i'm going to go ahead and cut it like right there now let's come up about an eighth of an inch so we have room for our flanges we're going to cut it like right there you can use any kind of saw for this. This stuff is really easy to cut. I'm just using a oscillating multi-tool cutter. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a very good shot. But there we go. One straight cut all the way through. Now we're going to go down and detach the tank and pull it out. Alright, now we're going to loosen the tank. What I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the back bolts. I'm just going to loosen them. They're just going to sit loose. Then I'm going to completely take out the front side. That way I can kind of drop it down this way. And kind of... Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't get my flashing all the way off because there's a gas pipe and stuff right there. 
So hopefully we can pull it out this way. So it turns out I do have a vent right there. <laughs> I'm gonna have to cut that one. Don't assume anything. I'm making ass out of me and you. There it is. That's quite a crack right there. Yeah. I had repaired a, a crack right around the the thing there, but this is new. That was a pretty major crack right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean it up, and then I'll show you how to fix that. I didn't think this tank was that dirty, but I was moving it around, and uh, there is all kinds of nasty stuff in there. You know, this is my kitchen tank. I didn't think it was that dirty, but it is full of nasty stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my my homemade uh, Pex flush wand here. If you want to learn how to make that, check out my other videos. You can make a an awesome flush wand for under ten bucks. But I'm going to go ahead and flush out this tank. We want all that stuff out there. All right, I've cleaned the surface really well and I've flushed out the inside of the tank. You can see our crack right there. Extends from, from there to there. So in order to complete this repair, you're gonna need a few things. You wanna get some medium black ABS cement. You can get this at Home Depot or on Amazon. You need a drill with a quarter inch drill bit. They make a, a spray now that's just basically the same stuff in a spray can. That makes a good final coat, or if you just have a small crack, you can actually use that. Um, I like, I'm going to like to use it to uh, do my final coat and to beef up areas that are kind of weak already. Then you need some fiberglass window screen. You can get this at Home Depot. Uh, it's basically just a fiberglass window screening. You can't use metal and... Do not try to use this stuff, this uh, this kind of fiberglass cloth. The ABS doesn't impregnate fully through it and make a good solid bond. You need something that's much more porous. So that's where this stuff comes into play. And then uh, you're just gonna need some scissors and uh, a nice big flushing syringe. Uh, this one will actually fit in my quarter inch hole. And that's why I chose a quarter inch drill bit so I could get down into the holes and fill backfill that crack there. So I've already cleaned the edge there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the edge of the crack, go about an eighth of an inch past it, 
Let me drill a hole. And it actually just continued past that because I kind of bound up the drill bit. We're going to drill another one out. There we go. That basically stops the crack from spreading. Basically, it relieves the stress so that if uh, if this continues to flex, it's not going to keep cracking past that. I'm going to do one in the middle just to have a little hook. Take some sandpaper and we're just going to rough that up. Alright, now we're going to use some acetone. You could also use methyl ethyl ketone or MEK. Just need a good uh, pure solvent. Uh, acetone you can get it at Walmart and Home Depot. Same with MEK. We're going to fill that into our syringe. And we're going to actually squirt it into that hole, into the holes, really getting uh, as much in that crack as we can. Fortunately, that was a nice big crack. We were able to get right in. Before that has a chance to dry, you want to take your ABS cement and do the same thing with that. All right, that's mostly dry. I'm gonna go ahead and do my first top layer. This is extra thick ABS cement that I made using ABS shavings. Uh, I'll cut to the video on how to make that here right now. In order to make the ABS shavings that we're going to dissolve into uh, the ABS cement, we're just going to use a, a cheap, this is like a 99 cent ABS fitting. You could easily use ABS pipe if you have that lying around. And we're also going to use our circular saw. That's going to make it really quick and easy. If you don't want to use a circular saw, you could use a normal saw, you could use a, a rasp or a file, but I like things to be quick.
That's the idea there. All right, we've got our shavings in a jar. We're just gonna take uh, our, some of our black ABS cement and we're gonna cover those. Basically, we're trying to make a thicker, thicker compound here. And since that's straight solvent mixed with ABS, it should dissolve pretty quickly here. You don't. You want to use a glass jar if you can, um, because the solvent will eat through a lot of different kinds of plastic. You want to probably do this at the beginning of the job so it has plenty of a chance to dissolve. You want all of those polymers to be fully suspended in the solution. You don't want to end up, it's not like biscuit dough, you don't want the little clumps in there, you want it to be smooth. So I'm gonna let that sit and dissolve. We'll come back to it in a little bit and see how, how our chunks are doing. Nice and thick. All right, you don't want to go too heavy with that coat. You just want that to set the screen in and get it stuck in there. And we'll come back and do a nice uh, final layer on that. So we'll let that dry another four to six hours and then come back and do uh, another layer of this and then uh, probably one spray layer on top of that. We let that sit overnight and uh, you can actually see that the crack actually settled back into its non-flush position. I guess that was its natural state. Um, even though I had the tank sitting straight up and down actually at an angle this way, um, it still settled into that shape. Um, it is still a little bit soft and pliable. If I really wanted to I could probably fill the tank up with water and get that to kind of bulge out a little bit, but if that's its natural state, I'm just going to leave it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do uh, one more layer of the normal medium black ABS cement, and then we'll let that dry, and then we'll do a one layer of spray coat. I'm also going to beef up all of my inputs and outlets. Uh, I'm going to use some of this stuff around each one of those, kind of beef up each one of those connections, because those are usually um, some of your more fragile areas on the tank. Alright, I let that uh, second layer sit overnight. Now I'm just going to hit it with the acetone. I'm going to go ahead and spray all the outer edges. I'm going to go over my major crack right there, and then I'm going to go ahead and spray the entire circumference, because that seems to be where it's getting the most flex. And then I'll spray around each of the uh, pipe outlets once more, uh, make them nice and strong.